people say I'm going to be doing something I've never done before. I'm going to be doing multiple movie reviews in one video. Today I'm going to be reviewing quite a bit actually. I'm going to be reviewing One Night in Miami, Mank, Borat, Subsequential Movie Film, Trial of Chicago 7, Minari, News of the World, and the United States vs. Billie Holiday. In order I review them as from least favorite to favorite. So yeah, I'll, most of these are awards movies that I watched late and I was like eh, it's too late for me to review them. I decided they really built up and my opinions aren't out there especially since it's award season now so I might as well get them out there so yeah it's quite a bit so I want to but it's gonna be very very short and small. Sadly um the one I most recently watched is the one I have um first and that is United States versus Billie Holiday. The best part about this movie is the production put behind it and Andra Day she won the Golden Globe, and clearly I wasn't the happiest about that. And I'm still not the happiest about that. I don't think um, it really should have gone to her. But um, I think it's still Frances McDormand's award. And the, produ and the production behind this was just... It, it was all made very, very well. But sadly, there's just a lot of stuff, and there's nothing to the movie. The, the movie's called Andrew Day, I mean, United States versus um, Billy Holiday, but yeah, it never really, it, that just feels like a side plot. Everything in this movie feels like a side plot. I don't really feel like there's anything really driving it forward. It's a series of side plots, and a lot of them really don't need to be there because it doesn't really affect the outcome of the movie by the end. This um, movie needed to take some advice from Mank, which I also reviewed, but I'll get to that. Um... Uh, what was it? What was the quote? And my favorite quote of the movie, too. I can't think of it. I'm bringing out of it. But, um, you cannot capture a man's life in two hours. All you can do is hope to leave him the impression one. And that's what I felt like this movie should have done. It tried to tell her whole entire life story, which is vague information anyways, considering, um, Billie Holiday's state of mind when she was giving all of her information. And yeah, I was very disappointed with this movie. It's just too much going on. I never know what to grasp from it. I never know what to get out of it. I'm going to give United States vs. Billy Holiday a 5 out of 10. Next up is... Next one I watched is News of the World starring Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks and this little girl, which, Helena Zengel. Um, it, it was a fine movie. Like, it felt very Oscar bait. It, it didn't... It just felt very Oscar bait. Um... It, I I watched it. I enjoyed it while I was watching it, but I it, it's very forgettable. I honestly can barely remember this movie. The only there is one standout scene where it's actually really tense, and there's it's a, it's a shootout, and that that's extremely tense. But um, by the end of the movie, it's very predictable. Tom Hanks doesn't necessarily have a character motivation. He's very he his character is very much driven by the plot, though. Tom Hanks and Helena Zengel give a fantastic performance. My favorite part about this movie is that it's definitely a f period piece. You can feel the 1870s feeling. It really captures that really well. And I want to give News of the World a 6.5 out of 10. Next up is Borat, Subsequential Movie Film. I watched the first one in preparation for this because I saw it got a bunch of nominations at the Golden Globes. I, I love the first one. I, ha I haven't reviewed that one. And I thought it was really funny. And I had high expectations for this movie because I heard it was good. It was a movie... Can like, I came home literally 14 years later, I was like, wow, they really must have nailed it. And I really think the first one's a lot better, but this one is still extremely funny. Sacha Baron Cohen and Maria Blunkeloff are both fantastic in the movie. It's just, I think it's really forgettable, and um, it's it really shows the side effects of trying to shoot a movie like this, where you don't know where it's going to go during COVID, because the movie purposefully unintentionally changes its course many times throughout the runtime because it was a, it first started off as a political satire about Trump then it became a COVID satire and it just it's a side effect where it just didn't I don't know what exactly I felt like I should have gotten out of it and it's sadly not the movie's fault it's it's COVID's fault and yeah you did provide a lot of laughs so I'm going to give Borat a subsequent movie film a 6.7 out of 10. Let me check the time real quick because I actually have a class coming up soon. I have to make sure. Okay, I should I should be fine. Next up I saw is One Night in Miami. Um, I knew Regina King was directing. I haven't really seen too much of her. I know that she's really high regarded and I had high expectations. And it was a good movie. It was definitely, it was a really good movie. I was just never exactly, not, not a single part of the movie felt like it grabbed me. 
and I had my, had my eyes watching the whole entire time. Everything I watched was good. It was extremely well directed for being in two or three rooms, mostly one room throughout the whole entire runtime. Um, the message is strong, the cast is great, the writing is on point, and like I said, the directing is really good for just, you know, keeping it in one room. It's just, when I said, I never felt like, oh my god, I'm, I'm just watching this, you know, this the showmanship of this fantastic movie. It was all good, I just never felt like, th this is it. I never felt that once. It was like, okay, it, be it began, it ended, that's fine. And it's just one of those side effects of being based on a play, sadly. Oh, now I'm going to give One Night in Miami a 7.5 out of 10. Let me check the time again. I'm really cutting it close. Jeez. Okay, next review I have up is Mank. Um, I didn't know really what to expect of this movie, and I watched it, and I really liked it. Um, the performances were fantastic. I love the way it captured the time period, and it was actually a really fascinating time period. I don't know much about... Um, movies and the productions back then and so seeing these people talk about movies and screenwriting it's all very fascinating to watch and i haven't and it was all new to me because i haven't really done that much research on that and it was it's all great gary oldman was fantastic it has my favorite quote of the year you cannot capture one man's life in two hours all you can hope to do is leave the impression of one and it definitely had an impact on that end i like the research and care that they put into it um, like most awards film, I felt like this movie could have lost about 30 minutes and it took a little bit to end. But I did really like this movie. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. I'm going to give Make an 8.3 out of 10. Okay, next movie I saw was Minari. Um, and I had high expectations from this. And it didn't disappoint. It really didn't. The cast was great. I thought this movie had a lot to say within its camera work. Its symbolism was really on point. But my favorite part of the movie is you could tell the care... And that they put in every single choice in the movie. Every single choice you felt like they definitely made it caring. And that's what happens when you have a director that really relates to their childhood and looks upon it fondly like this and tries to capture it in a movie, in a good director of anything. And and it was just brilliantly directed. And it was very intriguing. Um, things come back in a subtle way that makes sense. And it's just amazing. The um, grandma and the little boys, I'm not going to try to pronounce their names, the both of them give a fantastic performance, and they both the standouts in the movies, and their dynamic really worked, and that was probably the dynamic I was most interested in caring about in the, in the movie. My one problem, though, is I think the sister and the mom could have been a little bit more fleshed out, because what I th I think of Stephen Young from Walking Dead, that, for this movie, the little boy and the grandma, and I just felt bad for the mom and the sisters, because I felt like they felt kind of sidelined in the other three were there, which is fine. It's just, you know, I'm nit nitpicking. I'm going to give Minari a 9.3 out of 10. Let me check the time again because I have one more that I'm done. Oh, I'm fine. Anyways, the last review I have is The Trial of the Chicago 7. This is my favorite out of all the ones I went through today. Um, the script for this movie was just out of this world. It, I know why it won original screenplay. It makes sense why it won original screenplay. Every single performance in this movie was top notch. If the, if any of these actors were in any other movie, I'd be saying, oh, they're the steam stealer. Oh, they stole the scene. Oh, they're great. But everyone is on their A game and giving some of the best ensemble. Well, they gave the best ensemble performance of the year, and I hope Critics' Choice gives it to Child Chicago 7, because I really do think everybody did a fantastic job in this movie all together. And, yeah, what else did I say? The trial scenes... It's really hard to get me invested in trial scenes, but this movie really did it, especially since about 80% of the movie takes place in a court scene. And yeah, it's just, it's brutal too. It opens your eyes and it's disturbing and sometimes funny. Like it, the movie actually can be funny. It balances tones very, very nicely. What else did I say? Um, I like the emotion and care that you could tell was put behind this trial, their research. Like you could really, like, like Mank, you could really tell that they cared about this movie and project. I really did love this movie. The directing was great. I, I could tell it was a pro, uh, passion product, and the flow to this movie just really worked. The editing was top notch as well. It it almost felt like, um, it only Aaron Sorkin kind of gave me um, um, uh, Spike Lee vibes throughout this movie, but you know, not like the, not in the Spike Lee, uh, Spike Lee style. And I actually thought the score here was actually really really good as well. And I want to give Trial the Chicago uh, Trial of the Chicago Seven as well, a 9.3 out of 10. I know I give Minari and Trial of Chicago 7 the same score, but with the sli I give the slight edge to Trial of Chicago 7. And yeah, those are my, 
those are um, how many reviews did I do? I did a lot. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven reviews in ten minutes. That's pretty good. So yeah, I never done a video like this before. So let me uh, let me let me know what you guys thought of this video with me. I just go through them quickly because. You know, I, I just watched all of these and not within the same... I watched Charlie Chicago 7, like, back in December. I just never got a chance to actually review it. So, yeah. Anyways, like, share, subscribe, and stuff like that. And adios.